versus Brock Lesnar. I'll give you that. But outside of that, I don't think Fedor competes very well in the I UFC. Think Fedor not going to the UFC allowed for the intrigue to stay. He would not have done well against those guys like JDS. He wasn't beating Cain Velasquez. He was not beating those guys that were at the top of the UFC at that time. For as great as he is, he would have been at that time average at best. Fedor Billy Nagel in the UFC between 9 and 11, average at best. Man, I would love to get on this and debate DC about this because, man, his argument is strange. To discredit the legacy of Fedor Emelianenko on the eve of his fight. This interview was like a day before the fight or something like that. I don't know why he took this slight at Fedor all of a sudden. And it's not the first time an AK fighter has knocked down a legend in MMA. Luke Rockle used to do it back in the day. Habib did it with Jose Aldo. Now DC's doing it with Fedor. I don't know what's going on with that gym, but man, they don't take kind to older legends who have done a lot for the sport. Now, the whole argument from DC is if Fedor came into the UFC from 2009 to 2011 during the negotiations for him to come into the UFC after pride fell and affliction fell, how would he have done in that time in the UFC? That's very strange because we're not even talking about prime Fedor at that point. We're talking about a Fedor million echoes over the hill. He's on the decline. He's out of his prime at that point. When he came into strike force, even before that, when he came into Affliction, Fedor was not competing at the best of his abilities anymore. This was not only in MMA, but also in Samba, where he was a multiple-time gold medalist. After Pride, you start to see his striking decline. He started to rely a lot more on his power rather than any technique that he was able to display, such as in his fight with Mirko Krokop. Look at his fight with Mirko Krokop in Pride and compare that Fedor to the one that fought Andrei Arlovsky. He's not really the same guy. Even before he went into Strike Force, his coach was even saying that Fedor is not the same. So why is DC bringing up Fedor out of his prime to compete against the best heavyweights of the next generation. That's like saying, let's put DC up against the heavyweights five years from now. But here's the thing though, even Fedor out of his prime would have still done very well in the UFC. I completely disagree with what DC is saying here. He said that Fedor would be average at best. That means he would most likely be below average. That is so crazy to say. The average heavyweight in the UFC was probably right outside the top 10 at the time. That's like an average UFC heavyweight. You look at the best heavyweights, you look at the worst heavyweights. Average is probably like anywhere from number 10 to number 15. Somewhere there. Because there weren't too many heavyweights in the UFC at the time. That means... Fedor being below average would be on the lower end of the top 20? That's what below average means. Fedor would be a top 5 heavyweight in the UFC, 100%. He arguably could even be top 3. I understand DC later said that he would be probably top 5. That's not average at all. That's like one of the best. When you look at the rankings back then, you had Brock Lesnar as the champ. You had Shane Carwin as the number 1 contender. You had Frank Mir up there. You had Cain Velasquez. Juno Santos is on his way up. And Big Nog. That was pretty much your top 5 in the UFC and the champ. I think he absolutely absolutely beats Brock Lesnar. I think he beats Shane Carwin. Shane Carwin is a one-round fighter. In 2009, Fader still had somewhat of a chin. I think he would take some damage in the first round, but he will be able to outlast and finish off Shane Carwin on the ground, probably in the second or third rounds. I think he absolutely beats Frank Mir as long as he doesn't fall into a submission the way he did against Fabrizio Verdum. Now that's the thing with Fedor. Even in the fights he lost from 2009 to 2011, the Fabrizio Verdum loss and the Dan Henderson loss, he was doing well up until he got too aggressive and got caught. The only way he loses to Frank Mir is if something like that happens as well. Now Frank Mir's guard is not as good as Verdum's. Let's get that straight first. So I don't think Frank Mir will be able to catch Fedor the way he caught like Brock Lesnar or something. On the feet, Frank Mir has nothing for Fedor. His chin is nowhere near the level to take a big shot from Fedor. He cannot take down Fedor. His only reliance is to play possum, pull guard or something and capitalize if Fedor does get too aggressive. More chances than not, I believe Fedor beats Frank Mir. So I think he beats Brock Lesnar, Shane Carwin, Frank Mir. We get those out of the way. And I think Fedor would absolutely beat Big Nog in the UFC for sure. So without even looking at JDS and Cain Velasquez, who were the two best heavyweights at the time, they weren't ranked as the best, but skillfully, they proved to be the best out of the bunch. Fedor was already declared one of the top heavyweights in the UFC without even getting to those two guys. Now, I think JDS in 2010 would be a problem for Fedor. He had a great chin, superior boxing skills. He was longer. He had knockout power. He's not going to be easily taken to the ground. Fedor could put his combinations together if he becomes overly aggressive because JDS even that time he always had the same weakness not great on the back foot so there is a path to victory for Fedor being very aggressive pressuring a lot not taking a step back because that's when JDS finds that big right hand of his Kane on the other hand is a very doable win now I don't know if that version of Fedor would have beaten 
prime Cain Velasquez. But the thing is, Cain never really had a great chin. His wrestling potentially could be neutralized. Fedor can also go five rounds. And Fedor is not weak on the back foot. He could definitely fight well under pressure. Where a lot of guys that Cain beat in those days were not great under pressure. Brock Lesnar was bad under pressure. JDS was bad under pressure. Bigfoot wasn't that great under pressure. When he fought a guy that was great under pressure and Fabrizio Verdum, look what happened. It was a completely different fight. He wasn't able to overwhelm him. Now I understand C level Kane and all that stuff, but even in the beginnings of the round, like look at the entire fight. Kane did not gas out for the first three minutes. Almost every step of that fight, Verdum was absolutely in there. It was a different fight. Kane could not overwhelm him the same way he overwhelmed his previous opponents. Very similar when he fights Fedor Emelianenko. Except the punches that Fabrice of Verdun was able to land on Kane does not have the same kind of pop that Fedor has. Because Kane's head movement was not great, I do believe that Fedor's speed advantage, as well as his precision combined with that power, would be able to catch the constant head movements from Kane Velasquez. And just like with the Fabrice of Verdun fight, does Kane want to take down Fedor and deal with the grappling? Now, Fedor is not as great as Fabrice of Verdun on the ground, but I do believe he was a notch above Kane as well. But Kane's boxing technique would be an issue for Fedor Emelianenko. So let's say for argument's sake, JDS and Kane does beat Fedor. I think everybody else in the top five of the UFC, plus the champ Brock Lesnar, would have lost to Fedor Emelianenko. How does that make Fedor average? At best. Fedor at best in those days would have been a champion with a defense on his record, possibly two defenses, depending if he could beat Cain Velasquez. The best that Fedor can do at that time would be beating everybody besides maybe JDS. The worst he can do is still staying in the top five. That's probably the worst outcome for Fedor, being on the lower end of the top five. We're looking at this scenario during negotiations. He would have had an immediate title shot. He would have beaten Brock Lesnar. First title defense is Shane Carwin. Beat Shane Carwin. Second defense is Cain Velasquez. That's where it gets iffy. He can win, he can lose. Let's say he loses. On the loss, as JDS now fights Kane, Fedor is going to fight who? Frank Mir? Maybe when Alistair Overeem came into the pack? I think he could have beaten Alistair as well. But now we're talking about 2011, running into 2012, and that's where Fedor declines heavy. And DC brought up the win against Andre Arlovsky. When Fedor knocked out Andre, who was doing well against Fedor, he was saying that people wanted Arlovsky to retire. Why did they want him to retire? I don't think DC remembered Arlovsky's run, his win streak before fighting Fedor. Before Arlovsky lost to Fedor, he became the first guy to knock out Roy Nelson. He knocked out Ben Rothwell. He knocked out Jake O'Brien. And he beat Fabricio Verdum. And before that, he beat Marcio Cruz. That five win streak was literally right before he lost to Fedor Emelianenko. He was on one of the best streaks of his entire career at that point. He beat some of the best competition he's ever beaten before. Nobody wanted him to retire. Do you know when people wanted Andrei Olovsky to retire? After he lost to Sergei Karatonov. Because he was getting knocked out left and right, and he was losing the big fights. Now this whole argument was out of prime Fedor. To do this justice, we have to talk about prime Fedor. From 2002 to 2006, that was the Fedor that was beating prime Big Nog, who was regarded as the best heavyweight on the planet at the time. He beat Mirko Krokop, the scariest heavyweight on the planet. He beat Mark Holman. He beat Mark Hunt. He beat Kevin Random, and This is the guy we're talking about. That version of Fedor, because heavyweight hasn't really progressed too much compared to the other divisions, such as lightweight. Lightweight has evolved so much over the years. The guys of the past could not be the guys of today. But heavyweight is a bit different. It hasn't evolved to the level where the guys of the past can't beat the guys of today. I mean, heck, look what Randy Couture was able to do in his career. Look how many resurgences we've had in the heavyweight division. Andre Arlovsky came back into the UFC and was smoking fools. And Prime Fedor can't do the same? Prime Fedor would have gained someone like DC issues. I think it would have been a great fight. I think it would have been back and forth. Two guys that won't gas out. The power of Fedor versus the technique of Daniel Cormier. Cormier doesn't have the necessary power, I believe, to finish Fedor. Him and Fedor are around the same speed, and the wrestling could potentially be neutralized if it goes to the ground. Fedor is a much better grappler. His guard in his prime was so dangerous. Look how fast he caught those arm bars on opponents. Look how he was able to reverse Kevin Randleman, who's a great wrestler. Look at his arm bar against Mark Holman, another good wrestler. Even slamming Fedor is nothing new to him. He got slammed on his neck by Kevin Randleman and reversed the position almost immediately. DC is a better grappler than those guys. But I don't think he's on the level of Fedor Emelianenko. The fact that DC versus Fedor is even arguable tells you how great Fedor was. There's not a lot of heavyweights in history that would have beaten a prime Fedor. Francis Agano because of that otherworldly power. We can't really talk too much about Surreal Gan because we haven't seen him deal with takedowns too much. If he has no takedown defense, he's potentially done for. Prime Cain Velasquez will lose the Prime Fedor in my opinion. Prime JDS would be an issue. That's stylistically one of the hardest fights for Fedor in my opinion. Prime Alistair Overeem I think will lose as well. Prime Brock Lesnar loses. 
Prime Big Nog already lost to the guy. Prime Randy Couture, I believe, loses to him as well. Prime DC would be a fight. Prime Stipe, that's a great fight. I don't know which side I would lean to. Probably a little bit to Stipe's. Fader would have an issue crossing distance safely. I believe he can get intercepted coming in. He does start his combinations with that right straight, sometimes the left hook. Those are not great against Stipe from a distance, who has an extremely precise right cross. And he does set things off of his jab. He does like to pull a lot, so that does leave the single leg open for Fedor, where he can rise up to the clinch and from the clinch. Stipe does not want to deal with Fedor at all. If Fedor is able to get into the clinch, his chances of winning skyrocket. Rocket. He's most likely going to get tripped out. He's going to try to stand up and his neck is going to be taken. Like this is what we're talking about here. Out of heavyweight division's greatest fighters, you can only count on one hand the amount of heavyweights that could probably beat him. And we're talking about a guy who was in his prime 15 years ago. Crazy how fighters are disrespecting Fedor.